Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Villarreal or Mr. V from SA3 in Mission, Texas. And you're probably here to learn about FRQ number three, which is analyze an environmental problem and propose a solution with calculations, which we'll be doing in this video. Now, I do recommend that you download the PDF from the link at the beginning of the video so that you can work through these problems and be able to uh, follow along as we go. Okay. All right. So if you take a look here, we're talking about uh, North Carolina being a fast growing state. And in this first one, we're looking at the majority of electrical energy produced from the combustion of coal. So you know this is going to probably have some population and some energy questions. So let's see what it's got. Now, this is supposed to be a math question, but you'll notice the first one is identify one negative human health impact. So that's an important thing to understand. You're probably asking yourself, uh, Mr. V, where's the math? Where's the add, subtract, multiply, divide, right? Well, here's the catch. Every one of these FRQs has some of that math. Every one of these number three questions has some math, but there's always non-math portions. So in this part, you don't need a calculator. So <clears throat> if you have your calculators out ready to answer this, I promise you, you won't need it for just a bit, but you will need it in other portions of this question, okay? So again, what's a negative impact linked to the pollutants of coal? Well, it's going to be one of the following. And again, remember, one of the following. So don't use previous, don't use lots of answers as we mentioned in previous videos, okay? So in this case, you can get lung disease and you do need to be specific, say asthma, COPD, bronchitis, or lung cancer. You could also talk about neurological damage. Okay, you could talk about birth defects and of course, heart disease eye and eye irritation or respiratory or headaches, okay? So again, we're still talking about coal, and this one is talking about coal ash as a solid substance. So take a second and read that. And notice it talks about dry ash in landfills. That's gonna be a key one that's gonna be a part of this question. So in this one, it's a describe. So we had identify, and now we have describe. So describe means that we're going to ask a little more. So for example, if I ask you to identify the color of someone's shoes, you would just say they're red, they're white, they're black right? Or maybe if they're multiple colors, they're red and green, right? Whatever the case. Um, in a describe, if I ask you to describe someone's shoes, you're going to have to give me a little more, right? You're going to say, oh, well, they've got, um, you know, red soles or white laces. Or if you're a child of the 80s and 90s like me, you could say, well, he's got a little pump on the top of his uh, shoe to make, it, make him jump higher when he plays basketball, right? So you got to give me a little more during a describe. If you don't get that reference, it's okay. You don't have to be a child of the 90s. Um, and so an environmental problem, we're describing this. So we can't just say it's going to cause this and then stop. We have to say it can cause this, which is, and then you explain a little more or describe a little more. So here's some examples. One of the following. So don't give many, just give one. Leaching from clay line pits. You could say the water is going to leach through if it's um, going to be passing down into the water. You could say that it's going to overflow coal ash into bodies of water. You could say it's going to leak contamination of groundwater, soil, or nearby bodies of water. Or you could say that coal ash is going to wash into bodies or that dry ash is going to carry into nearby bodies of water and increase turbidity or decrease photosynthesis. So lots of examples could be used here. But again, we only just want the one and then they'll stop reading. So please make sure you're aware of that. <clears throat> so. Next one, letter B2 asks us a proposed solution is going to be to put the coal ash in clay lined pits. In this case, this is a new one. This is justify. So what they've done is they've given you an actual solution. You have to use your own knowledge or evidence from the text and say, how could this be helpful? So you have to give an advantage of this. So my best answer for this is to say, okay, they've given us this. Why is it a good thing? And defend it, basically. So now you can say that clay is less permeable than unlined pits, and it can prevent the leaching of coal ash into the soil and the groundwater. So that's a key, key takeaway there. So make sure that you're aware of what justify means. There may be others that say make a claim. And that's going to be where you have to actually say and make a stand on something. In this case, they've already done that and you just have to justify their solution. Okay. So now the part you've all been waiting for, let's get to the math, right? So we, like we mentioned, 
We've got a population question. So it's going to give us some numbers. And using those numbers, they want us to do what? They want us to calculate the percent change in Charlotte's population from 2013 to 2019 as shown. Okay. So there it is. There's calculate. And here's the key one. Show your work. Some of you may be math whizzes out there, right? And may look upon yourselves and go, I'm not going to add or subtract and write down that. That's too easy. I promise you it's important because all these questions are two-point questions. You get one point for the correct answer, yes, but you will get a second point for showing the work with your units in there, okay? So always, always, always show the work, no matter how simple, no matter how much of a math whiz you are, or even if you're allergic to math, like some people can be, right? You need to show that work always, okay? So calculator required, you do get that. And then the key thing here is you must, 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 must memorize percent change. It's going to be required of you, okay? We don't get a formula chart, unfortunately. So it's going to be one of those things where you just have to know how the percent change works, okay? So we're looking at the year 2013 and the year 2019. So here is that percent change equation. It's always going to be the final amount minus the initial divided by the initial here. And then that answer is going to be multiplied by 100. So to do that, this is the math you can use for it, which is your number for 2019, that was your final, minus your number for 2013, which is your initial, divided by that same number. Multiply that by 100 and you will get your percent. Now, there's another way to do this where you just divide the two and subtract one. If you don't, if that looks confusing to you, don't worry about it. If you're good with math and you're like, oh, I got that, I know that, then okay. But I always like the top one. So stick with the top. That's my favorite. <clears throat> and then you'll see that you get credit for showing this. And then you'll get credit for the answer. And it can be in one of the following uh, possibilities. So you can give an answer of 13%, 13.22%, or 13.224602. So we don't use sig figs in environmental science. So that's not going to be an issue for you, but make sure that you do put that decimal. I'm always a big fan of telling my kids to give it to the 10th or the 100th. So in this case, I would give it to the 100th um, just so you get a nice clean number, okay? And by all means, by all means, I cannot stress it enough. Go back and memorize that equation. That's going to be one you need either for the FRQs like this or for the multiple choice. Okay, so now letter B, here's some more math. Based on Charlotte's 2019 growth rate of 1.88%, calculate the year when the population is going to double, and of course, show your work. So we know that this is going to involve that percent, and we know we're going to talk about the double. So if you remember anything about environmental, we're looking at the doubling time from this year's growth rate, okay? So again, here's another equation you must memorize. So in this case, it's doubling time. That's going to be 70 divided by that growth rate. And that's going to tell you the years it takes to double. So the work you have to show here, if you want to take a second and do the math, you can. But the work is going to be 70 divided by 1.88. So don't turn that into a further decimal. Don't try to move the decimal over a couple points. Just use the number as given. And you'll get about 37 years, roughly. Okay. So 37 years plus the year we ended with, 2019, so that answer is going to be the year 2056, okay? So you must show both of those to be able to get your credit for it. So um, you know, double check that, make sure you did your math. And then right here, memorize, memorize, memorize that equation. Doubling time is another one that, unfortunately, we don't get that formula chart. So you need to make sure you know it, okay? And then the other math question here is the average Charlotte resident uses 90 gallons of water per day. So calculate the gallons of water used by that population in 2018 and show your work. Okay. So again, calculate, show the work. Two points right there. So we know we're using 90 gallons of water per day. We're using the 2018 population. And we want to know how much is going on. So in this case, we have to multiply a few things. So we have 90 gallons of water in every day. And there are 841,000 people, roughly. And there are 365 days in a year. So that's a number you just kind of have to know. Um, and so make sure you remember how many days in a year. That's always an important one. There's several numbers that 
they're not going to give you the units or numbers for. You just have to kind of, we have to assume you know those, right? And so from here, we can then figure out, right, in any of the following formats, here's the answers you can do when you multiply all those. So you can get either the long number or any one of the scientific notation numbers. So that ends up being 27 billion, if I'm uh, reading that right, correctly, right? Uh, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, right? And so when you see this, you don't have to use scientific notation. It's just easier and cleaner to use. But be, please make sure you use the proper format of that. And remember, scientific notation, you do need those numbers right here to be between 1 and 10. So you can round on these, but make sure you keep it correctly. Don't put 27.6 times 10 to the 9th, because that won't be correct. Yeah. So that was the math right there. Those were the points. Now we can see that the end of this question does not have math. We see that it talks about describing a realistic action that citizens could take to reduce domestic outdoor water use. So realize we're still realistic, so nothing crazy. You can't say something like we're going to shoot our trash to the moon because that's not realistic, right? Um, and we're talking about domestic water use. So there's possible answers here that could be used. So you could plant drought-resistant plants, you could eliminate or reduce non-essential usage of water, such as washing cars. You could also talk about the reduction of irrigation and using sprinklers, and depending on the weather. You could also talk about collecting rainwater or gray water, and of course, watering your plants at certain times and switching uh, to drip irrigation. Now, some vocabulary here that's important that's going to help out is talking about plant planting xeriscaping right? Making sure we understand gray water and drip irrigation. So lots of different uh, possibilities for answers, but make sure that you understand the vocabulary to be able to answer that, okay? So that was a lot, right? Whew, let's take a deep breath and see our key takeaways. <clears throat> so question three is going to be always math. It's always going to have math, but it's not all math, okay? So don't be afraid of question three. And of course, there are some you need some formulas that need to be memorized. In this case, we saw percent yield, doubling time. So you got to go back and look at those. Make sure you memorize them. And then, of course, ask yourself, what is the math trying to get me to calculate here? If you can do that, you'll be fine. Then, of course, show your work. Always, always, always show your work. Show the units as well. That's going to be a big, big deal. Okay. For these questions, question three. On all FRQs, there are 10 points. In this case, math is going to involve five or typically six points. Notice that even if you don't do well with math, if you're not comfortable with it, if, you're, if you didn't practice it when you were doing the AP practices, or if you feel like you're allergic to math, like some people do, that's okay. You don't have to skip the question. There will be at least four points to get from the non-math part of this question. So make sure you get that done. Don't leave it behind, okay? And if you want to study some of this, you're going to be explaining concepts. You're going to be applying quantitative methods and proposing and justifying solutions. So make sure you're ready for that. And then if you want to look at the content for this one, that's going to be AP Daily Videos 3.8, 5.10, and 8.14. So thanks for joining me. You're almost there right? Um, keep working and you're going to be great on exam day. Thank you. And I hope you learned something.